Well, hey, how you doing? Welcome to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Well, you can see here we've got the four jaw chuck all done, ready to go on the lathe. I just want to give you a quick lesson on the quick and easy ways of centering your work so you're not spending all day trying to get it good and center. Personally, myself, I like a four jaw chuck. Yes, three jaw chucks are nice and quick, handy that way. But you can really true up a piece of work in a four jaw chuck a lot better than you can in a three jaw chuck. I'm not saying you can't do it in a three jaw. You just got more options with a four jaw. You can actually even put in square stock in here, whatever you want. Anyway, you see there's rings on the face of this chuck. And there's numbers here. I don't know if you can read them or not. That two is worn out. You can't see it, but there's a three, four, five, and a six on the outside. What those numbers represent is the diameter in inches of that ring. For this inner ring is two inches. This ring around the bolts is three. Then you got four inches, five inches, and six inches. So you can set your jaws. If you know the piece of work you're going to chuck up in there, you can set your jaws to that real quick. Get it close before you start putting the piece in and dialing it in so you're not holding it there on the lathe trying to move them around and get them set. Now you can see I've got these three set at the three, but I went too far on this one, and it's out of the four. So I would be kind of messed up there, wasting a lot of time. I'm turning this back this way so you can see the numbers. Hopefully they show up on the camera. There's also numbers on the other side of each jaw. One, two, three, and four. Those are the numbers of the jaws. Each jaw is numbered to match that spot. Yeah, you could make an argument that, well, it's a four-jaw chuck. Each each jaw moves independently. You wouldn't have to put them back in the same spot. But it's a good idea to do it. That's the way it was made. That's the way the threads are machined. Yes, they were all machined together. They should all be the same. But as they wear, you want to make sure you put that wear back in the same spot. Now, the piece we're going to play around with today is this, this piece of scrap aluminum. And it's two inches there. If I just set it on there, you can see it just covers the two-inch ring. So, let's get it ready. Just doing one jaw at a time. I'm just going to bring this down close to the two inch ring. Now looking at the ring, you can see I'm off. I need to go that way and come this way. So, let's back this guy off a little bit. Tighten that one up a little bit. Move that one over. And that's pretty close right there. So let's go stick this in the lathe and I'll show you how to dial it in. Okay, here we are at the lathe. Now, you don't want to just set this in there and start turning it on. You drop it, you're going to take a chance of dinging up your ways. These are already a little dinged up from its age, so always put you down a piece of wood on there. It just protects your ways. It holds the chuck. It's, it's a smart thing to do. I've seen guys make some pretty fancy ones of all different sizes. This is just a piece of half inch scrap plywood I had laying around. I say it rounded over the edges to get rid of any splinters so I don't get splinters. and It's good enough for me. But I've seen guys make them where they had boards underneath so it couldn't move in and out. I've seen them where they were even braced to the bottom so you could slide this back and it wouldn't tip. But for me it's always going to be right there in the center. We'll set it up on edge, slide it up over, lift it up nice and easy, goes right on there. It's supposed to go right on there anyway. There she goes. And believe it or not guys, this is my first time mounting it on the lathe after it was all done. Now you can get the wood out of the way. And you're good to go. Do not use the power to put this on. In other words, don't hold this up and turn it on and try to thread it on that way. Always thread it on by hand. That's just common sense should tell you that. All right. Let's uh, put this in. Now I'm just going to uh, snug it just a little bit. About a quarter turn on all four of them or so. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look at the outside of this to the circle. That's real good right there. That's looking very well, so let's give it another snug. Make sure all four of them. Make sure one of them's not backed off and loose. Three and four. That looks good. So
So you can see I've got the zero about the midpoint of the swing. We're eight there. Well, no, I don't. Let's go right about there. That's pretty close there. All right, so now we can start adjusting it in. Now, I'm going to go the extreme right of the swing and watch what happens when I tighten it up. It's bringing it back towards zero. So what I want to do is come over here to the opposite side and loosen it. And it should take it back to the zero. It didn't hardly move it at all. But now we come to the other one and we can move it over there. See, there it went right to the zero. Now looky there, we're just barely moving. What are we getting there? Two, about two thousandths. And I don't know if this is perfectly uh, round stock or not. It's possible to move it too far. Of course, this being the uh, type of indicator that is in and out, instead of a one that just rides on it and moves up and down, dial test indicator, which are much better, I think. A little more pricey, though, and I don't have one yet. It's on the list. wish list that is. <laughs> Don't we all have that one? And we're still moving about two thousands but it's just got that quick jump there. Right there. Yeah, it went too far. I was afraid of that. It's looking pretty good right there. Now just to snug them all up without uh, changing that too much. So the idea now is you just want to put about the same amount of pressure on the wrench each time you're snugging it up. And then check it. It's still about two thousandths, but again I'm wondering how much of that is that guy so let's yeah as we're tightening it up we're just knocking it farther out And that does happen with the four jaw. It's easy to do.
really felt that when I saw that one move. And that's right around a thousand, maybe a little over. I can live with that. So let's take a uh, little cut off of this guy. There you have it guys. I was kind of going a little fast so my cut's kind of uneven but no well, plus I wasn't using any cutting oil. It is just aluminum but on carbide but still should use oil. Anyway just remember when you're adjusting these four jaw chucks you're doing opposing chucks at a time. Moving one out moving the other in to move this over where you want it. And then you do the other side and you just keep working back and forth until you've got it dialed in where you want it. Then when you go to snug them up, just do a little bit on all four of them, check it, and then just keep going around. You might have to go around two or three times snugging them up to get it good and tight, but that's all there is to it. And that's, that puts your uh, outside of your barrel of whatever you're turning concentric and centered to the center of it. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I hope you subscribe to my channel. Uh, like the video if you like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. Leave comments. I appreciate those too. And uh, hey, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.